So, the famous Chinese video generator Kling AI has just released its paid plans, and they are somewhat competitive for sure, especially considering that a lot of people consider Kling to be the best AI video generator that we can get our hands on right now. Funny thing, funny story, I was actually recording a video comparing Runway, Luma, Kling for image to video, and I had to stop here because all of a sudden now we have paid plans for Kling that introduce brand new features that we don't see with Luma Labs, that we don't see with Gen 3. So I think that I actually have to switch gears here and actually start talking about some of these new Kling AI features because they look potent, they look powerful. Let's start off with the plans though. I mean, you get free daily credits by logging in, so they're still somewhat of a free plan. I like to see that. Next up, we have 660 credits per month for five bucks a month and I'm gonna be real, that is not a lot. I think that's like, what, 60 normal generations? Something like that? So not too many generations for just five bucks a month. You do get other features like the ability to remove watermarks, generate professional mode videos, which I think are a more expensive per credit, higher quality video generation, and you can also extend video length up to three minutes. Now this is what I'm really excited for though, is advanced camera control. So they have some sort of camera movement feature, something similar to what Gen 2 used to have on runway, but Gen 3 doesn't have that feature, so be very interested to see that. Now next up, it jumps all the way up to 20 bucks per month, 1850, and that gets you 3,000 credits per month. So obviously we're getting a better price per credit here. You also get priority access to new features. So I think a lot of people are that are actually interested in spending money on video generators are gonna go with this pro plan. And then finally they have the premier plan, which is obviously for advanced users, and that's 8,000 credits per month. So that's uh, quite a bit more, again, just better credit per dollar, but all of the same features as Pro. So let's spend some money. I'm going to get the Pro plan and let's put Kling to a real test today. I hope we also get priority queue because Kling generations take forever in my experience. All right, so now we officially have this upgraded plan. We have 3,066 credits to play around with. We now have access to professional mode up to 10 seconds in length. Oh, camera controls are disabled in 10 second clips. Very interesting. All right, let's just, um, I think we want to do a standard mode generation with default settings and then compare it to professional. I want to know what the difference looks like. I think we should give this thing a little bit of a challenge too. I'm going to upload a photo of myself and then then tell it to turn it into a video of someone biting into a lemon. Video of a young man biting into and enjoying a juicy lemon. Again, we're going to leave all the settings on default. So there's this creativity and relevance slider. I'm leaving it smack dab in the middle. We want to compare the new features here. There's also negative prompt, which I'm just going to leave empty for now. So we're going to generate a standard mode video and then a professional mode, which 35 credits. That is way more expensive. I thought it would be twice as expensive. A professional Professional mode video, folks, is over three times as expensive. 35 credits versus 10 credits here. So I don't know if you can see that down there. Crazy expensive. So I'm hoping for some much better higher quality footage. It looks like if you really do want to use it for professional use cases, if professional mode turns out to be really good, you're, you might want that more expensive plan. Interestingly enough though, it seems like there is no difference in the generation time, at least on the surface here, between professional mode videos and standard mode videos. And our first generations have come through. So here is the standard generation. You guys can see this one now. Just me going in, taking a bite of the lemon. I think the close-up details, if you look really closely at your screen right now, you can see there is a little bit of morphing in my pupils, for example, on my cheek. It's not necessarily as coherent as a believable piece of footage would be, but it's definitely not bad for AI video. It's got that creep factor where, dang, this is starting to get very real. The background is super stable. It isn't bad. So now we move on to the higher quality video. And I think if we play this one, we can definitely tell that there is a level of fidelity that you're not getting with that smaller model. But because we're having a higher resolution, a higher 
level of fidelity, we can notice a lot more minute differences, let's say, um, that give up the ghost that it's AI, right? It's not as blurry, so we can tell, oh, that's not right, that's not right. We can see this little detail on my teeth, for example, oh, that's definitely an AI-generated video. Or even my fingers, for example, right? I gotta say, up here, though, like, the rest of my hair and my eyes and stuff, it's actually really, really impressive the level of quality it was able to achieve. But I do think that, in a weird way, this actually reminds me more of Gen 3 than it does the standard version of Kling AI. So just based on this first impression test, at least for image to video, I'm not so sure that the professional mode is going to be worth it. Text to video could be a different story though, so let's continue our testing. By the way, 10 second generated videos are not supported in standard mode. Professional mode supports up to the 10 seconds. However, you can extend any standard mode video. Also, camera movement is not available with image to video. So if you work mostly with image to video, you're gonna be a little bit disappointed. So just looking at the camera movement interface here, it's actually really, really nice the way that they set this up. There's a lot of thought that's been put into this. Horizontal, for example, they can show you the movement there. And vertical is the same thing, whether you want it to go up or down, or a zoom in or a zoom out. Actually, really, really nice camera control, I must say. That's, that's genuinely really impressive. They also have these pre-made master shots for different circumstances as well, which are pretty cool. So I gotta say the camera movement UI, I'm a fan for sure. Let's try like a zoom out. Let's try for our prompt, a uh, cat sitting at a bar drinking a beer. No idea how this is gonna come out. We'll do some negative prompts. And of course, just like Gen 3, we can actually load up this queue. So I'll do three generations for this prompt. I might as well just to test things out here. And then we can even put some more videos in the queue. Let's actually try a different aspect ratio we're going to go 720 by 1280, which is a portrait aspect ratio. iPhone footage captures a gray alien in the bushes, sunset middle of the woods. And for this one, I think we're just going to turn camera movement off. So we're going to generate two of these and then a 10 second one in professional mode, which is a whopping 70 credits. Jeez, man. All right, we're going to go a little bit more advanced. Close-up view of a popcorn machine popping marshmallows instead of popcorn. And actually, let's make them green marshmallows. For this one, we'll go one by one aspect ratio, 960 by 960. And we'll actually do a tilt, I think, for this camera angle like that. And we'll tilt the other way and retry that same prompt. So wide angle view of a man sprinting and jumping into a pool filled with ethereal space dust outside YouTube video. I guess I'll set this more to the relevance side of things. So that's a 0.7 and then we'll go 16 by nine because it is a YouTube video. And obviously for camera movement here, we're going to want some horizontal movement of him running and then jumping into the pool, right? And we'll see how that turns out. You know, I am doing multiple generations for these because I'd like to see some of the different things that this thing can generate. And actually, we just got a warning here. Submission too frequent. Please try again later. Let's try some 3D animation. We're actually going to try my lemon character. And for this one, we want to do camera movement as well. I'm thinking of a zoom in in and our cat at the bar video seems to have come through so let's check these out all right so the camera movement definitely works we have a very very strong zoom out here i think uh i might have been a little heavy-handed a little bit strong with the camera movement but it's definitely the inside of a bar there's definitely a cat he's not really drinking a beer i would say but the camera movement absolutely worked in this scenario and this appears to be the same thing this time the cat actually has a drink and the reflections in the glass look really quite good. He's not actually sipping on the beer. Can't really blame him for that. But again, the camera movement worked out really, really well. It seems to have a lot of control over it. And I'm impressed. For our third one, the glass is floating and we have two cats over here. Again, the zoom seems to be really, really powerful. I think I should have turned that down a little bit to have a less wild and crazy zoom factor. And I think we're probably going to see that for a lot of these videos here. Okay, so next up is the iPhone footage of the alien in the bushes. And yeah, just someone sort of holding up an iPhone in a, in a static view. We had no camera movement for this one, so that makes sense. And for the second one, we got a very similar generation. You know, maybe there's an alien in the phone here, but it took it way, way too literally and quite literally put, you know, iPhone footage in the video footage. It didn't 
quite understand what we were asking for. So those are flops. I think for the cat video, easily this one is the best. Like this is something I think that could actually be used in a project perhaps. While the rest of these generate, let's go ahead and move on with our generations. Let's try some super slow motion video footage. Let's try a, a pineapple exploding juices and pineapple chunks fly everywhere. Again, we'll move it slightly towards relevance. I'll do one by one for this, and I think I do want to do a zoom out again here, but we're going to do a much more subtle zoom out, and even maybe a zoom in, a very subtle zoom in. Looks like some of our other videos are generating. One of them seems to be kind of uh, stuck in escrow here, but this is the popcorn machine popping green marshmallows. So let's see, how did this turn out here? And this is supposed to be, oh uh, yeah, like the tilting. That's right. Okay, so kind of got there in the end. You know, we just have this tilting video of a machine, and then finally we see the popcorn at the end. And it's actually not popcorn, it's the green marshmallows like we asked for, so that's good. I think it would be worth it to try to extend this one so we can see more of the green marshmallows popping like popcorn. Uh, for some reason, the button is not doing anything for me right now. It's not adding to the queue at all, so now the next one here, we have the popcorn machine popping green marshmallows, hopefully, and it seems to be some sort of machine. Definitely has the tilt in the other direction, and yeah, there you go. I mean, I definitely was asking for something pretty nuanced, but it has, like, a popcorn-esque machine at the end there, and we do see green marshmallows coming out of it, sort of popping like popcorn. I'm pretty impressed by that. Oh, finally, we do have another alien video footage that's supposed to be, like, iPhone handheld stuff, and this was with professional mode. You can see professional mode totally took this in another direction. It did understand the prompt a little bit better, but again, this isn't very realistic video. It's morphing, it's mushing. There might be some higher level of fidelity, might be some higher quality in there, but I don't think that the professional mode is really worth our time to mess around with and use, especially because in this case, it did take quite a bit longer. So now we have the YouTube video of someone running and jumping into the pool that is filled with ethereal space dust okay kind of a wonky video he's sort of flying there and he's jumping yeah into a pool but is it filled with ethereal space dust i don't know <laughs> again very similar um imagery for all of these videos i will say in this case very very warped man is kind of like back flipping and just diving not even really into the pool so i don't know if it's our prompt that messed this one up but these don't seem to be working out too well. And again, there we go. He's kind of jumping in. It could be, you know, the same situation with the octopus that we experienced in my first look video at Kling, where the issue lies within the prompt translation, because I believe all of these prompts are translated from English to Chinese, which could be causing a few issues here and there with these video generations. All right, now we have the lemon uh, character floating in the pool with the zoom in, and I gotta say, that actually came out pretty dang good. Definitely an anthropomorphic lemon character, definitely have that 3D animation thing. Kind of looks like a bowling animation, uh, but honestly, not too bad. The camera movement has really impressed me here. We did maintain very similar camera movement across all of these, by the way. That's something I did forget to mention. The camera movement really, really solid for Kling. And then we have another anthropomorphic lemon just sort of floating in the pool, I believe, and it's a kind of a similar vibe. Again, the generations seem to be very consistent in their art style, according to the prompt, which is really interesting. I don't know if that means maybe the database has been slimmed down quite a bit, or maybe my prompts are just very, very specific for this particular generator. All right, now we've got our pineapple exploding in slow motion, and it's definitely some super slow motion video footage. I don't know if it's necessarily cracking and exploding like we would expect it to, but it's doing something. And again, we have a much more subtle zoom factor here going on with these videos, so pay attention to that. The camera movement works really, really well in Kling. I'm, I'm actually really, really impressed by it. Pineapple exploding, though, not looking too hot, I'll be honest. Finally, for this one, maybe we got something good, or no, it's just going to slowly zoom in on a pineapple. I will say, for Kling, it works best on the stuff that it has definitely been trained on, you know, the people eating, the cat videos, stuff like that. When you start to get into those weirder prompts, 
that seems to be where Kling starts to fall apart a little bit. And honestly, guys, I am interested. This one was a particularly big flop for Kling. I want to run this through Gen 3 and see if we get a better result from Gen 3. All right, so putting these generations through runway, I think it's pretty clear that it understands the prompt a little bit better. You know, wide angle view, the man is jumping in this like ethereal pool, you know, just a better generations, I think, overall. Um, some of them, you know, this one's not as ethereal, but definitely better. So some of those more nuanced and creative things, I think you might have to go with Gen 3 for those. Still, neither of them are anywhere close to being perfect. And also, I gotta say, comparing the pricing between all of these generators here, Kling is definitely going to be the best bang for buck here. For the Kling here, I mean, you're getting at least 60 generations per month here and the standard plan which is only five bucks per month and then you're getting way more for 18 bucks luma labs you know the standard gets you 120 150 generations per month for 30 bucks and you're definitely getting i think in my opinion a worse quality than cling and less features and then the plans only get more expensive from there up to 500 dollars a month for a little over 2,000 generations runway is also Super, super expensive here. We get 625 credits for 15 bucks a month. Now, you're also getting a bunch of other features that come with the runway platform, but not keeping those in mind, it still costs 100 credits to do a Gen 3. So you're not getting many generations at all, even with the $35 per month plan. So I think it's no contest here. The Kling clearly has the best plans. I think the $5 plan is kind of worthless unless you just want to like play around with it. But if you really are serious, either the Pro or Premiere plan isn't too bad in comparison to the other video generators that are out there right now. I also tried the Pineapple video here in Gen 3. And I mean, again, it's just very, very difficult to get a video that actually displays like a pineapple exploding with the chunks flying and everything. It's just not very easy for these video generators to comprehend just yet. I will say though, I do think that the videos I'm getting from Gen 3 here are a little bit better than what we got from Kling. It really depends on your use case, honestly, between, you know, Gen 3 versus Kling. Which one are you going to pick? Obviously, Kling's going to be cheaper, and I think it's a better bang for the buck, but for certain really weird use cases, if you really want to get experimental, Gen 3 is going to be better. Not to mention, in my opinion, the image to video that you get from Kling AI in general is better than Gen 3's, especially, you know, for prompts like this where I had you know a close-up video of me biting into a lemon and then I also had an octopus playing a banjo in the park this is again image to video image originally generated with ideogram AI and this one came out really really impressive so I think that out of all the video generators right now no contest cling kind of has it in the bag at least until Sora makes some sort of a public appearance right I am planning on doing some sort of a live stream maybe next week or so where we go through and use up all of these Kling credits that I just bought. I want you guys to have the opportunity to generate and share your ideas. So we'll do that interactively on stream. But thank you so much for watching today's video. You know, this was sort of a first look at a lot of these new features that Kling has, the new paid plans and comparing them all. And I've spent a decent amount of time now with these video generators and it's pretty clear to me that while I do love to use Runway ML, it is way more expensive than Kling AI, and Kling is very, very competitive in the image quality department, oftentimes actually edging out and beating Gen 3. So that's where things are right now. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.